because we got to remember, you know, Thomas Jefferson warned us when when the the people fear the government, there's tyranny. But when the government fears the people, there's liberty. If we're going to get our liberties back, we've got to make the politicians afraid of their constituents again and afraid of the consequences come re-election season if they vote to deprive us of our freedoms. Can I pause for a second and, and just note that uh, we got Brian on here who's getting uh, Congressman Massey on, and our typical lineup includes like homeless people that believe in Bigfoot. <laughs> Welcome to the Brian Nichols Show, your source for common sense politics on the We Are Libertarians Network. The Brian Nichols Show is the fastest growing liberty podcast that brings together people from all means of political thought as we seek to have meaningful conversations about the issues you care about. At The Brian Nichols Show, our goal is to leave the audience educated, enlightened, and informed. And now your host, Brian Nichols. It is Wednesday, my dudes. Welcome to today's episode of The Brian Nichols Show. I am your humble host, Brian Nichols. And yes, of course, you are in store for another fun-filled episode of the program. Today, we are joined by one of the leading voices in the liberty movement, and he is one spokesperson for Young Americans for Liberty, Eric Brakey. Now, Eric is joining the program to talk about all the great things that Young Americans for Liberty is doing. How about going out and knocking on 12,000 doors in the state of Texas, over 80,000 phone calls to folks trying to help support constitutional carry in the great state of Texas as a constitutional amendment and then talking about what's happening in Skidmore College. They won't let a Young Americans for Liberty chapter take place. Oh, and by the way, Young Americans for Liberty has a brand new executive director. We discuss all that and more on today's episode of The Brian Nichols Show. So with that being said, onto the show, Eric Brakey here on The Brian Nichols Show. Hey, Brian, thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. Eric, thank you so much for joining us on the program. I'm so excited to have this conversation because, my man, you guys are making Liberty win. That's what we've been talking about here at the program. And we try to figure out how can we actually make that happen? And my goodness, you guys are, are actually making it happen. So Eric, let's kind of set the stage here. First, introduce yourself to the Brian Nichols Show audience. And then for the folks here, a longtime listener, they're familiar with the organization. But for the tens of thousands of new folks who've been hopping on board over the past year or so, let's kind of do a quick refamiliarization. Who is Young Americans for Liberty? And uh, what is the mission that you guys are setting forth to uh, help get liberty in our lifetime. Yeah, well, awesome, Brian. Well, our mission is to make liberty win, as you said. And uh, my name is Eric Brakey. I'm the senior spokesperson for Young Americans for Liberty. I uh, got actually got started in the liberty movement over a decade ago, just as a grassroots guy, excited about Texas Congressman Ron Paul running for president. Uh, since then, I served two terms in the state Senate, passed constitutional carry in Maine, as well as a number of other policies. And uh, right now I'm here with Young Americans for Liberty because this is the, you know, the organization that is making Liberty win by uh, by identifying, uh, educating, training and mobilizing young liberty activists across the country uh, and and really, you know, focusing in on winning state legislative races, electing the next generation of Ron Paul liberty champions to, to state to state government and then holding holding the politicians accountable in the state capitals right there. And uh, amazing things have been happening this year from passing school choice in Kentucky to being on the road to passing constitutional carry in the Republic of Texas uh, and many victories in between. Looking forward to talking about all that. Yeah, so many exciting things. And this is this is why I have been looking so forward to this conversation because it's one thing to talk about this stuff. And this is what we're we're starting to, to discover as we're going through this conversation more in the program. People are looking to feel that not that's just that they're being heard, but rather that the people they're speaking to actually can present solutions that are viable, that are real solutions that they can see implemented in their lifetime. Now, Eric, you just started to speak towards it. You guys are, are having amazing success in the great state of Texas, where you guys are getting constitutional carry to the point where we're looking at that as being a constitutional amendment for Texas. Let's dig into that a little bit more. How did you guys get to the point now where we're having so many liberty activists winning that this is now the conversation that's being had in Texas? Well, you know, it's funny. People think of Texas as this great state for the Second Amendment. But really, when you look at what the actual laws have been here in Texas, uh, Texas is behind on gun rights when you compared to, you know, states, uh, you know, up up north 
behind you know my home state of Maine, behind even Bernie Sanders, Vermont, the original constitutional carry state. Now, constitutional carry, for those who are unfamiliar with it, simply means that you, you if you are a law-abiding citizen who can own a firearm, that you can carry that firearm without needing to go to the government and getting a permission slip to do it. But people have been trying to get constitutional carry passed in Texas for uh, many cycles now, and it's never even gotten far enough to get a roll call vote on the floor of the House or the Senate. But this go around, thanks to Young Americans for Liberty, thanks to Texas Gun Rights and other you know, freedom-minded organizations, uh, we have been putting pressure directly on the politicians uh, to, uh, to pass constitutional carry. I know there have been over, uh, near, our activists with Young Americans for Liberty have knocked on over 12,000 doors in the districts of, of, of legislators who are swing votes on constitutional carry uh, and, and made nearly uh, 80,000 phone calls. Uh, to their constituents. So we're directly connecting constituents with their legislators, telling them vote to uh, to pass constitutional carry or we're going to remember in re-election season. Because we got to remember, you know, Thomas Jefferson warned us when when the, the people fear the government, there's tyranny. But when the government fears the people, there's liberty. If we're going to get our liberties back, we've got to make the politicians afraid of their constituents again and afraid of the consequences come re-election season if they vote to deprive us of our freedoms. I mean, Eric, we're seeing why it's so important right now. Now, I don't know about you. Did you hear much about what's going on in Myanmar right now? Uh, a little bit. I don't know all the details. Though. Right. A little bit. <laughs> because it's not being talked about. And I just yeah. said, so one of my really good buddies from college, he's from, from uh, he's 100% Burmese. And he was in a protest trying to raise awareness to what's happening in Myanmar. And... I'm, I'm talking to him and I'm, I'm saying, hey, Wea, like, would you want to come on the show and talk about this? Because I really haven't heard anybody talk about it. So I had him um, and then two student activists who are involved in like, I think, four or so different organizations each um, trying to help raise awareness to what's going on over in Myanmar. And it's like, oh, my God, this is right there. Why we need to have a Second Amendment. This speaks to why it's so important to have a, a populace that can stand against a tyrannical government. I mean, we just saw right now in Myanmar that the death count, 700 civilians wow. shot dead by military uh, military personnel in this military coup. It's it's horrifying. And yet we pretend it can never happen here. Eric, it, what are you talking about? We're in America. That That's something that you know it happens in other places. It could never possibly happen at our doorstep. Where are folks getting so so wrong in this delusion of grandeur we seem to have? It, it really, it seems to be arrogance, no? Yeah, well, of course, we see it in Myanmar now. We saw it in Hong Kong just the other year. You know, the, you know, people, you know, standing up and trying to get the freedoms for themselves that we in America take for granted every single day. Uh, as people across the world are fighting to try to get these freedoms that uh, you know are, are, are just frankly our inheritance, our birthright as American citizens, and yet so many people are just you know content to let them slip through our fingers. Uh, and frankly, over the course of the last year, I think it really has opened so many eyes across our country uh, you know, to that idea of it could happen here. I mean, we have seen government tyranny in America uh, in a real way, like like I, I don't know that anyone alive in this country has 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 seen before uh, over the course of this past year. We've seen violence in the streets. We've seen real civil unrest. Uh, you know, we can look across the the world and say those things can't happen here. But I think more people are waking up to the fact that uh, you know we're not immune. We're not immune to those kinds of things in America. No, not only are we not immune, but we're seeing the the blueprints that were laid out in a lot of these other countries that have collapsed in recent years it's starting to follow more and more here in the united states we're seeing the the collapse across these different especially these, these more left-leaning uh cities especially and in, in states and i i guess it leads more to this argument that we've been seeing more on the right right and i, I and more the libertarian slash small l liberty world where we're saying hey if we have to have some <laughs> some level of defense against this overreaching federal government it has to be the states so let's talk about maybe the approach eric because one of the things i've been talking about here at the show is policy is infinitely more important than rhetoric we can talk all day long a good game yeah. or we can talk about all the things that the terrible things that people have said in the past or we can focus on what's making people's lives better 
right now. So let's talk about specifically, you know, when you guys are going out and you're trying to get policy into action, are you seeing the Republican Party as that viable means of getting policy into action? Is is that actually right now the most successful approach that you've uh, you've been taking? Yes, yeah, certainly. Well, I should say Young Americans for Liberty is a nonpartisan organization. We, we, we as an organization do not specifically, you know, say, oh, we support one party over the other. And frankly, I think that more, more times than not, the politicians we're going after are Republicans uh, because, uh, you know, we're, we're often, uh, you know, primary challenging uh, rhino Republicans and replacing them with Liberty Republicans. So we're not on team Republican. We're on team Liberty. And we will use the vehicle that is most effectively available to to make Liberty win. Uh, and um, uh, over the last two election cycles, we've engaged in many races. We've taken our young activists and and deployed them to go knock doors to uh, to to elect uh, principled Liberty candidates. And we've elected over the course uh, over the course of two cycles now 179 Liberty legislators. Uh, in fact, in the state of New Hampshire, we've pretty much uh, you know, the, the Liberty legislators that, that have been elected in New Hampshire are now the majority of the Republicans. I don't mean to interrupt. So I was yeah. reading a new book from Philip Stutz. So he was like one of the main marketing minds for Carl, Carl Rove's uh, 2004 Bush uh, campaign. Yeah. And in the book, there is a specific shout out to the quote, libertarian bent in the GOP in New Hampshire. So that's you guys, Young Americans for Liberty and the Free State Project. Candidly, you guys are making a difference up there. Yeah, you know, the Free State Project really brought in a lot of folks. I mean, a lot of people moving to New Hampshire to be a part of the Free State the Free State Project. And that's kind of bringing in the raw materials you need to, to, to build liberty is, is you need to have the people, the people willing to work and make this happen. Uh, and so uh, you know, major kudos to the Free State Project and all of the locally grown kind of liberty organizations that have that have grown out of that 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 environment there. That has created a great opportunity for Young Americans for Liberty to come in and provide some of the air support. You know, some of the 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 the, the uh, young students to kind of be on the ground to knock doors to elect all these uh, all of these candidates. And now in New Hampshire, we're seeing the possibility that New Hampshire could become the first right to work state in all of New England. We're seeing um, uh, a major push for school choice. We're seeing Republican majorities in the legislature stand up against the Republican governor, against lockdown orders. And I mean, frankly, I mean, we see it, we see it plenty of times, you know, people willing to stand up against, against governors in the opposing party when they're doing unconstitutional things. But, but rarely do you see legislators principle to the point where they will stand up to their own governor in their own party. And that's exactly what's happening in New Hampshire uh, mm -hmm. as uh, principled liberty minded people, regular people stand up, run for office. And with the help of young Americans for Liberty, we're able to get them across the finish line. So <laughs> speaking of trying to get people across the finish line, I mean, right now, I think we're talking about policy from a, not only just prescription standpoint, but there are, there's policy, you mentioned school choice, that are top of people's mind right now. Mm -hmm. And I would say the lockdowns as well are top of people's mind. So you're talking about the policy specifically, Eric, but what would you say are some of the, like, the top two or three policy issues that you're seeing a lot of the candidates that Young Americans for Liberty is, is uh, working with? What are those issues that they're su supporting? Are they more localized issues? Or do we see a, an overarching theme going across the United States, uh, across the board? Well, there, there's any number of things I could point to. I could point to, you know, our champions who are fighting for school choice, where school choice has been passed now in Kentucky. Uh, we have passed the House and the Senate in Missouri, led by one of our, our Hazlitt Coalition Liberty legislators. Uh, that's actually going to the governor's desk right now, major school choice legislation there. Uh, I could talk about constitutional carry, what we've talked about. But one thing I would love to talk about that I think is is an idea that is still somewhat in its infancy, but is uh, advancing at a rapid pace, and I think has has great potential for making a huge difference in the future. And that's something mm -hmm. called defend the guard. I don't oh know yeah, you're... please, yes, go. Uh, I, I've, so I had Nicholas Magner; he's running for assembly over in Jersey. He dug in just a little bit, but this is so important. So yeah, please set the stage for people who are not familiar. So defend the guard legislation, which was sponsored in 31 states across the country this this year. Um, mostly led by, you know, active duty combat veterans, many of whom are Liberty legislators in Young Americans for Liberty's Hazlitt Coalition. Um, 
defend the guard legislation would basically look, it basically it's an act of nullification. So if you look at the most successful nullification efforts across the country in recent years, you look at, you know, cannabis nullification. Basically, the federal government unconstitutionally said that cannabis was illegal. You know, look at Article 1, Section 8. We never gave them the constitutional authority to do that. So the states basically stood up over the course of 20 years and said, yeah, we're not going to follow that. We're going to determine the legality of cannabis in our own states. And lo and behold, 20 years later, uh, 44 states have nullified uh, federal federal cannabis law in one way or another. And if that can work for cannabis policy, that can work for gun rights, that can work for, you know, right, right to try legislation that went through over the course of the last half decade. And why not be even more ambitious? Why not nullify uh, the, the probably the, the most important issue facing, facing our country, which is unconstitutional war. And here's the mechanism by which this works is that um, while the states don't have any say in the Constitution over the U.S. Army, the U.S. Navy, uh, the Air Force, we do have at the state level, every state has constitutional authority over the state National Guard. And that accounts for actually, by some estimates, nearly 50 percent uh, of, of the troops who are, who are stationed overseas in these undeclared foreign wars. Now, if Congress actually declared war formally, as they're required to do under the Constitution, authority over the National Guard to go fight these wars is transferred to the federal government. But because they've never actually followed the Constitution and declared war, really our National Guard soldiers are only overseas with the complicity of the state governments. And, and frankly, you look at uh, organizations like the American Legion that have passed resolutions on the national level calling for an end to the forever wars, down to local affiliates like in the state of Maine, we have an American Legion post uh, that specifically uh, unanimously adopted a resolution in support of defend the guard in the state of Maine. Um, you know, it is the it is our our veterans who have fought these wars who are who are leading the fight to say they want a constitutional mission. And if uh, if members of Congress want to put American soldiers' boots and blood on the ground in these foreign wars, they need to have the courage to sign their names to it and vote for these wars as the Constitution requires them to do. But we've been in this situation for 20 years now. People have been just trying to make change by getting Congress to do their jobs, by just going and begging Congress to, to, to vote to end the wars or at least vote to formally authorize them. But they're not going to do that because they don't want to be held accountable. So the way <laughs> around that is to go to the states and pass Defend the Guard legislation. That's what we're pushing to do. It may take a, you know, it, it might might not happen this cycle, but we're getting politicians on record who's voting for this, who's voting against it. And once we get the roll call votes, well, then we can come back and hold politicians accountable. And um, that's where we're going to start to make a real difference in in uh, seeing this legislation move forward. Now, speaking of trying to keep people accountable, I mean, Eric, let's talk about what's happening in Skidmore. You, you guys are trying to keep Skidmore College accountable because What's this? They're not letting a Young Americans for Liberty chapter open up on campus. How, how on earth is that even happening over? I mean, goodness, Skidmore, what's going on there? Yeah, this is a this is a crazy violation of both the freedom of speech of their students and the basic right to freedom freedom of assemble. Um, you know, you have a a, a great uh, a great student on the campus of Skidmore College. Her name is Hannah. Uh, she uh, wanted to form just a student chapter of Young Americans for Liberty. And apparently, uh, you know, woke activists run the student government there, which apparently has to approve what uh, what organizations can uh, can form on campus. And they basically denied her the right to form a, a, a Young Americans for Liberty chapter. So um, yeah, we are taking legal action uh, against Skidmore College to, you know, we just want them to respect the freedom of speech of their students. And so, uh, you know, we have been uh, f fighting free speech fights on on campuses across the country. We've men won many legal battles uh, over the course of the history of Young Americans for Liberty, and we're taking the fight to Skidmore College. So wherever wherever freedom of speech is challenged on college campuses, we'll be there to fight back. <sighs> Man, I, I can't believe that we're at a point. I mean, I, I can't believe it. I say it tongue in cheek because I did an episode with Kenny Cody where we're saying wokeism is on the loose and it is. And I just I I can't really comprehend. I wasn't in college 
that super, super long ago. And just the idea of not letting a club on campus that you disagreed with, it's just so alien to me. And, and I, I guess maybe you can help me, Eric, because you're you're seeing the, the college activists that you you have at Young Americans Liberty, and they're some of the best activists in the entire movement, but they're they're probably have no experience. The, the craziness firsthand. So what what's maybe that conversation like right now on the ground, especially in colleges like Skidmore? I mean, has it really gotten that bad? Is, or are we just seeing, you know, this caricature being blown up on right wing media trying to make the left boogeyman of, of college campuses look worse than it actually is? Yeah. Well, you know, this is something we've we've witnessed on college campuses for years, but it's mm. it's it's uh too uh it's certainly becoming more and more prevalent. But look over the years, I mean we've had We've had young Americans for Liberty activists on college campuses who uh, have been arrested for handing out pocket constitutions. We just had our, our state chair in Pennsylvania put in handcuffs uh, on a college campus for, for simply. Yeah, Ben, geez. Yeah, Ben, just, just uh, you know, talking to students and helping them form a chapter there. Uh, but yeah, and, and, you know, in, in Skidmore, um, at Skidmore College, it really was. Yeah, it's it's wokeism run amok. You know, it really makes me miss the old left. You know, I remember the uh, the the leftists of you know uh, just a, just a few decades ago uh, at least valued and and uh, freedom of speech. That used to be that used to be a value, a, a liberal value used to be freedom of speech. But now uh, the leftists of today, uh, you know, any speech that they uh, that they disagree with, they don't want to they don't want to. Uh, hear people out. They don't want to have a debate. They just want to shut people down. And frankly, I think that 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 uh, that's that's a recipe for for disaster if we're trying to have a free and open society. So uh, freedom of speech is essential. We are fighting back, and uh, we're going to be taking the fight to Skidmore College. Thank goodness we got folks like Young Americans for Liberty and Eric Brakey, and now. Drum roll, that's right. The new executive director of Young Americans for Liberty, one Lauren Doherty. Now, Lauren joins the uh, the uh, Young Americans for Liberty team. So excited to have her on on your, your, your team. Talk to us, Lauren's story, and kind of what are we looking forward to now under Lauren being the executive director? Well, we're all very excited to welcome Lauren to the team. Uh, I've gotten to uh, know her over the course of the last couple of weeks. I think uh, she brings some excellent leadership a lot of uh, history and experience in the liberty movement. She's worked with great organizations like uh, uh, like Freedom Works and and the Leadership Institute. Uh, she's also uh, you know uh, we truly are a nonpartisan organization here. She she worked for uh, the Libertarian Party uh, as the executive director there and brought some competent leadership. Uh, but she is fully on board with our mission to make liberty win uh, through uh, our efforts like Operation Win at the Door across the country. And, uh, and I think you're going to be seeing a lot more of her in the, in the near future, but we're very excited to have her on board. Yeah. I'd love to hear it. Now, Eric, part of my show, I'm a sales guy by trade. And one of the things I like to do is paint the better future. So for folks out there who maybe they've been licking their wounds over the past few months since 2020's election, there's maybe some hope on the future, I would say. So what would you say to those folks out there as we head down here towards the, uh, the end of 2021, there are some state elections out there. So make sure folks you're getting involved and getting aware of when your elections are taking place, but then heading into 2022, the midterms are just around the corner, which is hard to imagine. So we're going to see, be seeing a, a slew of elections coming down here, the pike. So Eric, what is the battle plan for the folks out there? And, and really, is there a, a better future for the folks who are trying to find some liberty in the lifetime? Are we going to see us get back towards that path or are we gone too far in the other direction? I think that we're making tremendous strides and the strides that are being made are in the states. And I know that some people just look at the state legislatures and they think, oh, this is just like the minor leagues. You know, the major leagues are Washington, D.C. That's where we need to get people. We need to get people into Congress. But even if you talk to people who get to Congress, you talk to, you know, Justin Amash and Thomas Massey and great liberty champions who've been there, they tell you they have very little power in Congress. I mean, frankly, you can't even sponsor an amendment in Congress without Nancy Pelosi's sign off on it. So really, the power, if we want to make a difference, we got to stop getting distracted so much with Washington, D.C. With the real power under our Constitution is at the state level. And if we get principled liberty legislators elected to the state capitals, that's where we can make liberty win. Not only can we defeat tyranny on the state level from uh, you know, passing school choice, passing constitutional carry, opposing lockdown orders, 
we can fight back against federal tyranny more effectively on the state level than we can even from, uh, from Congress. Because that's on the state level, we can nullify unconstitutional federal powers. We can pass defend the guard. We can, uh, we can nullify federal cannabis prohibitions. We can, we, 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 you know, pass things like right to try nullifying the FDA. We can nullify gun control. There are so many things we can fight back against the federal level from the state level. So uh, as far as the, the the strategy of 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 making liberty win, freeing America through the states, we're making a lot of progress there. And I would encourage all of your viewers and listeners to to get involved. Look at your state. Maybe maybe you are a future candidate yourself. Maybe maybe you're someone who can stand up and 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 run for office. Or maybe you can help someone who can. But if you'd like to get involved and help make liberty win, you can learn more at yaliberty.org. If you're a potential candidate, fill out our survey. Let us know that you're running. Uh, you might be someone we'd be interested in engaging for, or if you know a candidate, or if you just if you're a young person who wants a job, helping to knock doors to help good candidates get elected and holding politicians accountable. We're always hiring and looking for good people at yaliberty.org. And if you really want to knock doors, I mean, it looks like Eric's got a, a plethora, especially if you're in Texas, 12,000 doors down there. Come on, guys. Go ahead and, and hey, phone calls, 80,000 phone calls. You will not be bored if you're working with Eric and his amazing team down there with Lauren and Young Americans for Liberty. So what I'll make sure I do, Eric, is I will include all those links in the show notes. But folks, I've said it from day one. I am a huge supporter of Young Americans for Liberty. I believe that you guys have it figured out in terms of, of actual political means to get liberty in our lifetime. So folks, I cannot encourage you enough. Please go ahead, not only support Young Americans for Liberty by sharing today's episode and sharing all the work they're doing, but get involved. Please go ahead if you can support them financially. It, it, hey, it, none of this stuff just happens by the, the very magic of just, just us, you know being here and existing. It requires our blood, sweat, tears, and yes, hard-earned dollars. So uh, folks, please go ahead, support Young Americans for Liberty, their mission. And with that being said, Eric Brakey, thank you so much for joining us here on today's episode of The Brian Nichols Show. Hey, thank you, Brian. Good talking with you. All righty, folks, that's going to wrap up my conversation with Eric Brakey from the amazing Young Americans for Liberty. I cannot tell you how much I am a fan of Young Americans for Liberty. They do, uh, they're due. They are doing amazing work, and they continue to do amazing work in actually helping get liberty into action. That's what we're talking about here at the program. We're done talking about libertarian ideas. We are getting libertarian ideas into action. That's right, folks. So with that being said, please do me a favor. Go ahead and share today's episode with family and friends who need to hear the message of what Young Americans for Liberty is doing in helping advance, yes, liberty in our lifetime. So go ahead, share today's episode, and tag yours truly at B Nichols Liberty, Twitter, Facebook, Minds.com, and Parlor.com. Email me, Brian, at Brian Nichols Show. Dot com if you want to say hi or if you have a guest suggestion for here uh, on any future episodes of the Brian Nichols show also if you have not had the chance yet head over to our awesome new ebook it's briannicholsshow.com forward slash liberty friends ebook one more time briannicholsshow.com forward slash liberty friends ebook that's right plural friends because we're all friends here at the Brian Nichols show and what is that ebook four easy steps you can implement now to sell liberty to friends and family we have been seeing the download numbers for that book skyrocket so you guys must be getting some value eh? which is great because I know for a fact that it works uh, firsthand just because as a sales executive and marketing executive in the greater telecom and cybersecurity industry I see it work firsthand so guys I'm going to ask you one more time if you have not had the chance yet head over to get our free ebook how to sell liberty four easy steps to implement right now to sell liberty to friends and family brian nichols show.com forward slash liberty friends ebook also if you have not had the chance yet and you're like hey i'm digging what you guys are doing here at the brian nichols show and i want to go ahead and say shut up take my money well my goodness we will take your money and invest it right back into what we're trying to do here at the show and that is advance the show grow the show and get more people uh, really aware of what we're doing as I grab my nice little peak interest tool. And that is 
are don't hurt people and don't take people's stuff bumper sticker. Now, every $5 a month subscriber will go ahead, yes, and get one of our don't hurt people and don't take people's stuff bumper sticker. And by the way, each uh, each subscriber, I, I cannot thank you enough for your support thus far. We have an amazing group of patrons, and we just actually had our, our first video go out here um, this, this past Tuesday to the Patreon subscribers. So be sure, if you had not checked that yet, Patreon subscribers, you head over there, a nice little uh, traffic cam video for you. But otherwise, we're, we're helping build up this base of sales folks in the greater liberty world, figuring out how to best articulate the ideas that we talk about here every single week. So if you are getting excited about these ideas of liberty and you want to take that next step, head over to the Patreon, The Brian Nichols Show, and you can sign up to be a $5 a month entry-level sales Patreon subscriber. And yes, again, I cannot stress it enough. Get this awesome don't hurt people, don't take people stuff bumper sticker. It's a blast. Also, guys, if, if that's too much, if you're like, hey, Brian, I can't make that commitment. Five bucks a month. Sorry. Cup of coffee a month. I can't do that. Hey, no worries. I get it. Head over to Apple Podcasts. Just give us a quick five-star rating and review. It costs you nothing. Uh, all, all maybe, what, 15 seconds, 20, 30 seconds of your time. Just tell us why you get value from the program. What do you enjoy from the show? What do you take away every single episode? So with that being said, folks, thank you so much for joining us here on the program for Friday. I don't know yet. I have a, a maybe guest up in the air uh, in the works with a, a well-known Austrian slash libertarian economist. Uh, so I think we maybe we could talk about what's happening in terms of the right now supply shortage or uh, supply chain shortage that we saw or breakdown rather leading to the the shortages and also the ra rampant inflation. Um, so a great conversation. Fingers crossed on that coming up on Friday. Otherwise, I, I have a couple other con conversations here in the back pocket that you could be hearing from. So regardless, if you're looking for a surprise episode on Friday, well, make sure you've hit that subscribe button so you're not missing a single episode. But with that being said, folks, thank you for joining us on today's episode of The Brian Nichols Show. That being said, it's Brian Nichols signing off for Eric Brakey from Young Americans for Liberty. We'll see you Friday. Thanks for listening to The Brian Nichols Show. Find more episodes at briannicholsshow.com.